extended church members in California. And she had been praying. Been praying for you. And she sent me this. And I wrote it down so I would get it correct. Don't know exactly who this is for, but I know it's for somebody. The Lord knows. Yes. But she said the Lord impressed her with these words. And I'm going to share them with you this morning. The Lord said His will. The Lord said His way. The Lord said His where. And the Lord said His voice. Sounds to me like somebody's looking for something. And you've been praying about something. And you've been asking the Lord for something. And He's given you the answer that you're looking for. His will. The Lord's will. The Lord's way. His where. And His voice. And if you'll take heed to that and follow the leading and the direction of the Lord, I promise you, you'll be rejoicing in just a very short time. Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. I love the way the Lord works. Amen. I love the way the Lord works. When we have, have no knowledge of anything, He just kind of comes in and gives us a word yes. sent all the way from California for you this morning to let you know that He sees you, He hears you, He knows you, and he loves you. Yes. Hallelujah. What a great God we have. Yes, amen. What a great God we have. Yes. We will go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We will remember those on our prayer list. And if you don't have a copy of the prayer list, there's one on the table as you leave this morning. We want to remember these this morning in prayer. We want to remember these every day in prayer. And if you have a need or a name that you want on this list, please be sure to let me know so we can keep it updated. Because I want to tell you something. We have seen the Lord answer miracle prayers in the last few months. Yeah. Well, Leon's standing here with us this morning. Every time I look at him, I'm reminded he's an answer to prayer. Yeah. When doctors didn't want to do a surgery on him, Brother Leon said, I want it. And I believe it's going to be all right. Yes. I believe God's got everything under control. Yes. And here he is sitting with us this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. And there are many other things that we can talk about, but that's just what a miracle-working, prayer-answering God we serve. God. Anyone has a need this morning, just make it known, raise your hand right now. Yes, We're going to take these to the Lord in prayer this morning. <clears throat> Our gracious God of heaven, we come to you today because we love you. And because we are so grateful, Lord, for your love for us. And we're so thankful and we're so grateful that you are you are our our provider, you are our source, you are our healer, you are our redeemer, you are our strength and our hope, and so much more. And Lord, we bring these needs to you this morning. Lord of heaven, once again, we lay these souls at your feet, and you know their needs, you know their physical needs, you know their financial needs, you know any other need they may have. And Lord, we believe that you are able to do yes. exceedingly abundantly above anything yes. that we're able to ask or think. Yes. And we give you these today in the lovely name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen. I want special prayer for my body. For my back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
The word of God tells us if you have yes. sick, pain, whatever, yes. call for the church. Yes. And let the church pray. Y'all come help me pray for her back. Yes. She's been having trouble in her back. Yes. Holy Lord God of heaven, in the name of Jesus. Yes. My Lord God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for what you're about to do. Because my Lord God, again, with this thing that has been bothering her, this thing that has been hurting her right now, we release it to you. My Lord God, we release it to you. We speak Jesus to this seed. We speak the healing to this seed. We speak the healing of Jesus Christ right now in the name of Jesus Touch her body. In the name of Jesus, touch her body. My Lord God in heaven, right now we pray. Holy oh, Lord God, forgive me because we know that you are able. We're standing by faith this morning. We're exercising our faith this morning according to your word. And your word does not lie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah forevermore. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone else want prayer this morning? Anyone else want prayer this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Alvin Ford's in the VA hospital. Alvin Ford's in the VA hospital. Lord God, right now we pray for Alvin. Lord God of heaven, you know Alan's life, you know his heart, and yes. my Lord God of heaven, you know his needs right yes. now. And I pray in the name of yes. Jesus for Alan Ford. Yes. My Lord God, that you would reach down in that hospital bed right now and touch his body. Yes. Reach down in the hospital right now, Lord God of heaven, and touch him, Lord. Give him the healing that he needs. Raise him up out of that sick bed. My Lord God of heaven, we've seen you do it before, and we know that you can do it today. And we ask you, Lord God, that you would touch and move in our behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Where could we go but to the Lord? Yes. Amen. You know, people run to many places and to many things. But God is the source of every bit of it. Yes. Hallelujah. He is our source. Living alone in this old sinful world.
Praise the Lord forevermore. Praise the Lord. God, if he's been good to you, say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. He's been so good to us. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon. It just keeps getting better and better every day. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. The old song they used to sing, it just keeps getting sweeter as the days go by. Yes. And I want the every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Praise the Lord forevermore. <coughs> I want to share with you this morning something that the Lord has written heavy on my heart with. It's my passion. And it's something that I feel with every fiber of my being. Yes. My goal, my ambition, my purpose, and everything that I strive for is in these first few words to look unto Jesus. Not only for me to look unto Jesus, but to point people to Jesus. Yes, amen. See, if you've been around the church world any length of time, you <coughs> have probably heard some of the terms and some of the phrases and things that sometimes are often used. Things like church slogans and Vision statement and mission statement. Well, Cross Point is no exception of a rule. Amen. Our church slogan is Cross Point Church, pointing people to Jesus. Yes. Our vision statement is very simple. It is our vision, it is our heart to point this 21st generation, century generation, to Jesus Christ. With the same effectiveness that the first generation yes. church had in the book of Acts. Yes. And as they were empowered by the Spirit to do the work that needed to be done in that day, we to be empowered by the Spirit to help us do what we need to do today to reach this generation. Our mission statement is this that with our daily living, we are to be led by the Spirit. We will be submissive to the Spirit so that we can walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit and be the example for this generation to see Jesus Christ. Yes, I mean. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, today I'm going to add a little twist to it because this is what I'm about to preach with you this morning would probably could easily be defined as our passion statement. You've never heard of the passion statement. But this is our passion statement, what I'm about to share with you this morning. Week after week, you hear me as I preach and I teach about pointing people to Jesus Christ. And I hope you never get old, it never gets old, it never gets tired for you to hear it because I promise you that as long as as there's breath in my lungs, that's what I proclaim to do is tell people about Jesus and point them to the cross of Calvary and remind them of what he did for them there. See, the word reminds us in 1 Corinthians 1 18 that there are a lot of people that think the preaching of the cross is foolishness. There's no sense in it. It's old-fashioned. It's outdated. And, and it doesn't mean today what it used to mean. Can I tell you this morning that that's why the preaching of the cross, talking about what Jesus did at Calvary, what took place on the cross, the significance and the importance of it is never mentioned in many churches today. Oh, there are those that well, say, Pastor, it's just too gruesome. Pastor, it's just too bloody. It's too gory. 
I don't like to think on bad things and those things. I like to think good thoughts and have good vibes and, and all this type of thing. But I'm going to tell you today, we need to be remembered for what took place on the cross. Yes. We don't want to be reminded, but we need to be reminded. Because when we lose focus of what took place on the cross for you and I, we begin to disappreciate what took place on the cross. Many years ago when they come out with a movie, Passion of the Christ, my wife and I went and seen it. And I sat there with tears running down my cheek as I watched this movie. And running to someone afterwards that we knew and they looked at me and kind of sarcastically made the statement, do you think it was as bad as all that? And I told him, hey, it was probably worse. Yes. And for weeks afterwards, I would just break down and sob and cry because I got to thinking, yes. hey, I'm the reason he had to go through that. Yes. My stubbornness my pride, my rebellion, yes. my hardness of heart, me, who I was, and the reason that he had to go through that. That's why we preach the cross. Yes. That's why we talk about the cross. That's why we remind people of the cross so that we never forget how much he loved us enough to do for that for us. See, there's so many churches today are in the entertainment business. They want to entertain people. Yes. But God uh, wasn't worried about trying to help people make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. My friend, let me tell you, I want you to be blessed when yes. you come to Cross Point Church. Yes. I want you to be blessed when you watch the videos of Cross Point Church. I want you to be, to be encouraged to lift it up. But not our goal is is to, that, that, that something can be said, something that can be done, something that can take place every time we get together that will strengthen our faith, that will encourage us, and will help us make it on that day that the trumpet sounds and, when, and the Lord comes to call us church. Yes, amen. My goal as pastor to lead us to heaven. Yes. You know, there are too many today that are just, they, they, they have gotten into the numbers thing and they're trying to grow a crowd so that they can boast and brag about how many folks they had in the building on Sunday morning. And there's nothing wrong with a large crowd on Sunday. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. If we're there for the right reason and for the right thing. If our purpose and our goal and our heart is in the right direction. Yes, I want to tell you, my friend, there are so many today that are misquoting, misrepresenting the gospel, twisting and turning scripture so that they can use it as, as, as a tool to try to draw a crowd to them, to look at them and hear them to impress the world. I'm not here to impress anybody. I can't impress anybody. I have nothing to impress anyone with. That's why I strive so hard and so much to point people to Jesus Christ. Yes. I don't want you to be impressed by me, but I want you to look to him yes. and be impressed yes. by him. See, it is the will of God because his word tells us that he is that we prosper and be in hell. But we, we, we need to look at this. How does it, what, what it says? What does the word tell us that it's going to take for us to be prosperous and be healthy? That our soul has to prosper. The spirit man inside of us yes. has to prosper. Yes. We've got to put some things of the flesh aside so that the spirit man can grow. Because as the spirit man or the spirit woman inside of us begins to grow and prosper, as our spirituality begins to prosper, then our health will begin to prosper. And then the other areas of our life will begin to prosper. That's right. But as long as we hang on to our flesh, yeah. we'll never prosper. That's right. We'll never. I want to tell you something. When 
A person gets their eyes off of Jesus Christ. And what he did on the cross of Calvary, the spirit man begins to die. Yes. Hear what I'm saying? Yes. When you get your eyes off of Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross, the spirit man begins to die. Yes. And it won't be long to where he's withered away into a deadness and a dryness. Yes. Brother Glenn preached a wonderful message a few weeks ago entitled Getting Ready for the Dark or Getting Used to the Dark. I'm still feasting off of that. I'm still blessed with that. Amen. It still touches me. But I'm going to tell you something. There is a spiritual darkness that has already overtaken our land. Yes. It's, not, it's not coming. It's here. Yes. And hear me when I tell you this morning that if things don't happen and if, the, if we don't pay a heed to the tent to the word of God and the people of God don't begin to fall on their face and, and call out to God and repent and, and begin to petition God on behalf of this nation in a very short period of time, America will be a third world nation. Yes. It's coming. Yes. It's at the door. Yes. Now you can ignore what I'm saying if you want to. But I pray the Holy Spirit pricks your heart to pay attention to what I'm saying. Yes. You say, well, Pastor, how can this be? We're the Christian nation of the world. No longer the Christian nation. At one time, America was the Christian nation of the world. At one time, more than half of our population decreed and declared faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and who he was. That's not the case anymore. We have, we, 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 we have a, a, a thing today where they're trying to mix and mingle multiple gods together. It's against the law in, in, in many places today to speak the name of Jesus, but you can talk about Buddha. You can't speak the name of Jesus, but you can talk about Muhammad. You can't speak the name of Jesus, but you can talk about this God or that God or no God at all. And we wonder why our nation has went from being the, the superpower of the world to the laughing stock of the world. How can this happen? How can this happen to the Christian nation of the world? Because somewhere along the line, the church quit preaching about the cross. Yes. Somewhere along the line, we quit telling people about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes. We began to give them all kind of philosophy and all kind of things to make them feel good. But their feel good doesn't really do anything for them. I want to remind you what the book of James tells us. That every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And as they come from the Father, yeah. every prayer that we have answered comes as a result of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every need we have met comes as a result of Jesus Christ. Philippians 419, we all love this and we love to shout with this and we love to quote this and we love, this is our faith, this is one of those faith uh, uh, verses that we like to hang on to because we know our God shall supply all of our needs and we, we like to stop right there that we know God's going to take care of it but we, 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 we sometimes we like to, we forget the last part how is the Lord going to take care of our needs is by, by Christ Jesus. Yes. By what Jesus Christ has already did 2,000 years ago on the cross. That's why I said earlier in Corinthians, we're talking about for those that, that, that think the preaching of the cross is foolishness, but to those that are redeemed, those that are saved, those that know better, we understand and realize it is the power of God. Yes, amen. It is the power of God. Yes. I'm going to tell you, when you leave off preaching and teaching about the cross, you leave off the power of God. Amen. Can I tell you that we're not saved because of the virgin birth? If we're born again, we're not born again because Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. We're not born again because he was born in Bethlehem stable on that first Christmas. We're born again 
by what he did yes. at the cross. Amen. I'm going to tell you when we're healed. We're not healed because of the miracle that Jesus did. We're healed by what he did yes. on the cross. Yes. When our needs are met, it's not because one day Jesus turned water into wine. Any need that we have met by the Lord, it's because of what Jesus yes. Christ did you, at the cross of Calvary. Yes. Amen. Everything we get from God, Yes. Every miracle, every blessing, every yes. prayer, every time we feel that warm, fuzzy feeling that we get or the presence of the Lord come into where we're at, it comes as a result of what Jesus Christ did at the cross of Calvary. Yes. Amen. What did he do? Philippians tells us that he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. See, he didn't want to go to the cross. Part of him didn't. He knew that was his destiny. Yes. He knew that was the plan. He knew that was the purpose. But you begin to read in the Gospels that there come that evening in the Garden of Gethsemane just before they arrested him to where he knew what he was about to face. He knew the agony. He knew the torment. He knew the shame. He knew the suffering that his physical body was going to have to be to endure. And the, the man in him said, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And he prayed so earnestly that the, 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 the Bible tells us that his sweat actually turned to blood with the intensity of that he was praying. The capillaries in his forehead began to burst and he began to sweat blood <laughs> with the intensity that he was praying. Who was he praying for that night? He was praying for you and me. He was praying for us. I don't want to do this. But then nevertheless, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. See, Philippians tells us how that he took on the form of a servant, made the likeness of man when he came into Bethlehem stable. He, then, then later he would humble himself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And because of what he did there, the word says God has highly exalted him and give him a name. Now let me spend just a moment right there. That name, is we, 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 we just read past that, that name means authority and power. Can I tell you, God the Father, because of what he did on the cross, has given the name of Jesus authority and power yes. that we can speak the name of Jesus. Yes. We can decree the name of Jesus. And so much so, we can say unto any mountain in our life, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of Calvary, you've got to go. By the name of Jesus, we can lay hands like we did on my wife a few minutes ago and lay our hands on her back that's been hurting and speak to the pain. Pain in the name of Jesus Christ by the authority of Calvary because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. We call out to those things that are not as though they were and we say, pain, you've got to leave. Yes. <clears throat> and not only what the, the pain itself, but whatever's causing the pain yes. has got yes. to come back into alignment. Yes. Yes. That's how much power, that's how much authority we have. Oh, you say, well, that's foolish, Pastor. I'm going to tell you something. You haven't began to dwell into the depths of the name of Jesus and the power and authority that it holds when we as children of God use it correctly. Yes, amen. I want to tell you something. He goes on to say that the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Every knee is going to bow. Oh, there are some that refuse to bow today. I see no need in bowing before him. I see no need in worshiping him. I see no need in getting excited about him. But I want to tell you something, my friend. There's, going to, there's a day coming. They're going to stand face to face yes. with, the, with the great I am and they're yes. going to look him in the eye. And on that day, they can look him in the eye. They're going to drop to their knees yeah, and yeah. say, Lord, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Lord, I'm sorry. I should have bowed before you long ago. Yes. 
And every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. Yes. Yes. Many people use the name of Jesus today so loosely as a slang word or a curse word or, 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 or some way to laugh and mock. But I want to tell you something, my friend. Every tongue one day is going to stand and they're going to confess yes. that he is Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. See, when the church quits preaching the cross, souls cannot be saved. I just got through reading a book about Generation Z. Every year or so they change the generations. I have a hard time keeping up with what generation I belong to. But, but you know, we got a Generation Z now. And the Generation Z is a certain age group from about 27 or 28 down. They talk about their mindset and their thinking and, and, and their outlook on life and so many other things. What? Why did it get so bad? Because somewhere along the line, somebody quit telling them about Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary. Yes. That spiritual darkness that we're talking about that has overshadowed our nation. There are dangers that lurk and hide in the darkness. Yes. Dangers that are there. And one of those dangers is that good old boy mentality that the devil has, has, has bombarded the imagination of man with. That says, I'm good enough. I don't need God. Yes. I'm good enough. I don't need salvation. I'm good enough just as I am. I don't need this. My friend, let me tell you something. The darkness has blinded mankind to, to the supremacy of who God is. Yes, the darkness has blinded mankind to the majesty of God, to the splendor of God, to the holiness and the purity of God. Because of the darkness, mankind, for the most part, no longer sees God as Isaiah saw God in the year that King Uzziah died when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, worthy to be praised. Yes. Now many look at God as just a good old boy. One God among many gods. The big guy in the sky or the man upstairs. My friend, let me tell you, he's not the big guy in the sky. And he's not the man upstairs. Yes. He is Jehovah. Yes, he, is. he is creator. He is the great I am. Yes. He is the Lord God Almighty. High yes. lifted up. Yes. My yes. Lord God of heaven. We need to get back a hold of that. So we need God. to get back a hold of that. And I've been praying, Holy Ghost, my yes. Lord, get a hold of our hearts. Yes. Get a hold of our minds. Yes. Speak to the church. Yes. Speak to your people. That my Lord God, once again, we can get our minds back clarity with who you are yes. and your majesty and your splendor and your glory and just who you are so that we can share with others. Yes. What we know. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. See, because in my many people's eyesight today, God's just a good old boy. I stumbled across a song this week on the internet just by accident as I was looking, asking for something else. And it was actually a country singer back a few years ago they come out with a song brother Glenn Jesus is a good old boy but I couldn't help it I had to hear what he had to say and I listened to about that much of it and I was repulsed by it I want to tell you something Jesus is more than a good old boy yes. he is Lord Yes. he's master Yes. He's Redeemer. Yes. Now he's the all in all. He's the great I am. Yes. Amen. He's more than a good old boy. Yes. But I want to tell you something because of the darkness that has that has infiltrated and overtaken our land. See, many don't even realize what it means when we say somebody has been saved. 
They don't realize what that phrase and what that term, what that word means. That means to be spared from the wrath and the judgment of God. Yes, thank you. And I'm going to tell you something. We've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. I don't care how much of a good old boy we were. I don't care how much charity we've done. I don't care how what family we come from. How many preachers was in our hair to do anything else? We were still born a sinner yes. in need of a Savior. Yes. And Jesus Christ is the one that paid the price that we can be saved. We can be spared from the wrath and the judgment of God. Yes. That's what it means to be saved. Now, let me say this. Once we get saved, that don't mean we stay in our sin. That's why there's a big controversy today about that. That's why he saves us out of our sin. Because if my life was repulsive enough to God that I was about to be judged by him and punished by him and I needed to be rescued and I needed to be saved from that, my friend, let me tell you, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord, that's why I turned away from that lifestyle yes. because if it didn't please him then, it's not going to please him now. Yes. Amen. Well, that's a whole other message for a whole other time. But I just had to put that in there. Because I'm going to tell you something. In our righteousness, in the darkness, the mindset is that I'm a good old boy and I'm good enough. Can I tell you that our righteousness in the sight of God is nothing more than a filthy rag. Our righteousness in our own self, no matter how good we are, no matter how kind we are, no matter how, it, it, all the good things we can do in ourselves, without Jesus Christ in our heart and in our life and us having our names written in the Lamb Book of Life, meaning that we've come to him and said, Lord, forgive me, Lord, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life and his, our name is written in that book. My friend, let me tell you, our rightness on our own is nothing more a filthy rag. I want to tell you something. God uses the foolishness of preaching to save those who are lost. The foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. What do they preach? Well, we all know, you know one, of the, one of our favorite scriptures that we use when we're leading somebody to salvation is, is, is the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, that what? God raised him from the dead. What do you mean? Before he could be resurrected, he had to die. Where did he die? He died on the cross. So we've got to accept, we've got to believe, we've got to, we've got to, you know, we've got to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. In order for people to be saved. You begin to look through the book of Acts, and I love reading the book of Acts. And there's no telling how many times in my Christian experience I've read through the book of Acts. But they had one message, and they preached everywhere they went. And that message wasn't a Baptist doctrine. It wasn't a Methodist doctrine. It wasn't this doctrine. It was that everywhere they went, they preached Jesus and him crucified. Yes. And I want to tell you something today. If we are going to turn this world and if we're going to turn the tide and we're going to do what we've been called to do and what we've been commissioned to do, we're going to have to do no less. Tell this world about Jesus yes. and him crucified. Can I tell you something? When the church quits preaching the cross, we can't offer anybody any hope. That's right. Because Timothy reminds us that Jesus Christ is our hope. Yes. Can I tell you that when the church quits preaching the cross, we can't afford anybody any peace. Because there's only He is the Prince of Peace. Yes. He is the Prince of Peace. Yes. And the only way we can have peace is through Jesus Christ. Because, see, to have peace, the peace of God, we've got to have peace with God. Yes. And the only way we get peace with God is through the cross. Yes. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. 
when we preach the cross, when we point people to the cross and we tell them about Jesus and him crucified, when we tell them about the pain and the suffering that he endured, when we remind them of what he did and why he did it, then we can tell them about the life-changing, soul-saving plan of salvation that's able to come in and turn their life around and put them on the right road that's a whole lot better than anything they've ever known. Yes. I will tell you something. When we start preaching the cross and telling people about the cross, we can offer them the living hope. Not a dead hope, but a living hope yes. that we have in Christ Jesus. I tell you, when we point to, to the cross of Calvary, we can tell them we can tell them about the joy of the Lord that is our strength. No, oh, my friend, let me tell you something. There is no joy outside of Jesus Christ. But in Jesus Christ, because of what he did at Calvary's cross, we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And it's that joy that gets us up in the morning. It's that joy that walks with us through the day. It's that joy that's with us when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's that joy that keeps us going. That joy in knowing who he is. Yes. And he's got everything under control. Yes. See, when we preach the cross to those who are oppressed, we can tell them as we point them to Calvary what Isaiah wrote, how that he was afflict, oppressed and he was afflicted. Where at? At the cross. But then we can also tell them because he was afflicted, because he was oppressed, because of what he did there, that the psalmist tells us that he is a refuge yes. when we're oppressed. Yes. He is the place we can go to when oppression comes our way. Yes. Yes. And we can find comfort and strength there yes. because of the cross. Yes. To the depressed. We can tell him as we point to the cross what Isaiah said, how that he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that as he hung on the cross that day, 2,000 years yes. ago, he carried our griefs, yes. he carried our sorrows, our sorrows, our pain, our suffering. He carried our hurts with him on the cross. My friend, let me tell you that the word tells us that we can cast our cares on him for he cares for us. He's already paid the price to yes. take care of it. Yes, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Yes. What he says. Oh, my friend, let me tell you. For those who are in need, we can tell them as we point them to the cross. How that Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our people upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Yes. Hundreds of years before Jesus ever went to the cross, Isaiah already declared, because of what Jesus Christ would do, we are healed. Yes. The Apostle Peter, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, when he had ascended back to heaven, in his epistle, he tells us by his own self, there are sins on his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. You say, well, that's contradictory. No, it's not. Isaiah was looking ahead and says, we're going to be healed. That day he goes to the cross. Where I declare it by faith, it's going to happen. Peter was looking back that day that he was on the cross and said, because of what he does, we are already healed. There's already healing for the heart. Yes. For the brokenhearted, you can be healed. There's already healing. For the, for the body. There's already healing for the soul. There's already healing for the mind. Yes. Because of what Jesus Christ did Amen. at the cross of Calvary. Yes. Thank you. Bow your heads with me this morning. Yes. 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 Y
Holy Lord God, we love you. We thank you for this day. I pray right now that you touch hearts and move the hearts and lives of your people. I want to ask you this morning, what do you have need of this morning? Every one of us come here today with a need of something in our life. What do you have need of? And I'll go one step beyond that. What is your desire this morning? What is your heart's desire this morning? Because not only are our needs met at the cross, when we walk in the light of Scripture and we give our life to Him, and this word that I shared with you earlier, this may be where it comes in at, is because when we allow His will and His where and His way and His voice to become our will, our way, our voice, when we completely submit and surrender to Him, not only will our needs be met, but our wants will be met as well. Not only will our needs be met, but our wants will be met as well. Do you need healing? It's here at the cross. Do you need peace? You'll find it at the cross.
Yeah. 
Jesus loves you. The second person you see, you need to tell them, Jesus loves you. Remember what I said last week? The third greatest thing you can do for somebody is tell them about Jesus. The second greatest thing you can do for somebody is take them where Jesus is. And the third greatest thing you can do is introduce them, or the first greatest thing you can do for somebody is to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet and be just We're almost all preaching again. <laughs> Brother Danny, would you just listen to this morning word? Praise the Lord. 